Hi there, this is Mark Burnett with QBrush and today we're going to be looking at how to create panoramic 360 degrees paintings in Photoshop. So those are especially interesting now that Facebook supports the format, the 360 degree format, because it allows you a very different perspective um, into your own paintings or into other people's paintings. So it allows you to essentially be inside the painting, which is very interesting uh, to play around with. So uh, I'm gonna show you how to achieve that in Photoshop and it's actually a lot simpler than you might think. So the first thing we want to do here is go ahead and create a new file. So we're gonna select a file that is fairly big uh, because it's going to be, this is going to be a canvas that is wrapped around a sphere. So uh, you'll, never, you'll never be working at the, on, on the, the whole thing at once. Uh, you know, at most, if you have like a crazy fisheye that allows you to see half of your canvas, half, the, half of the sphere, then you'll only be working on half the resolution. So, and that's not gonna be the case. So you'll probably have a focal length of something uh, in the you know in the range of 10 to 20 and at least that's what I'm comfortable working at and that means that you're going to be zoomed in a lot more than that so you know your resolution might drop even to something like 10,000 even maybe possibly less with a you know a resolution for your file that is 10,000 by 5,000 so you might want to go even higher than this if your system can handle it just to make sure I don't crash I'm going to go ahead and do 10k by 5k so you'll see here, this creates a rectangle. So this is going to be the image that is going to get wrapped around the sphere that we are going to be painting on. So we'll be essentially located inside the sphere and painting uh, on its walls. So uh, just so that we have a little bit of uh, you know, something to look at, once we actually transform this into a sphere, I'm just gonna draw like the horizon here and like maybe like a, a tree. All right, so the, you'll see the steps is actually very simple. So all you have to do is make sure that you have the right version of Photoshop. So anything here, you can go ahead and click on your about uh, option. So anything be, uh, beyond 2015 version, 2015.5. Uh, anything beyond that release is going to work. Anything below that, is not going to work. So, you know, make sure you have the latest version of Photoshop. Um, and there you go. So, or at least anything, uh, you know, beyond 2015.5. So, the what we're going to be doing now is just go into the 3D menu, new mesh from layer, and then mesh preset. And then we're going to go ahead and click on the spherical panorama. This is going to say, to change the the UI to the 3D, uh, 3D UI. So you'll see a couple more things that are added in here. So uh, in this case, you know, your, your menu might seem a little bit different. So you might have in this, uh, the top left corner here, kind of like a sphere uh, that you might, you might want to, uh, to, to hide or just close that tab because it's not that useful. And then uh, you'll see a new tab here and then your layers tab is going to look a little bit different. So. Uh, the 3D layer here is pretty interesting, so we'll look at all this stuff uh, shortly, but also you'll see, you know, these properties here that are also important. What I did in my case, I just went ahead and, you know, displayed, showed the um, history, the history tab and the color tab so that I get some sort of a, uh, you know, a, a, uh, a UI that's a little bit more familiar. But of course you can arrange that however you like. So. Now, uh, well, let's see. So now we have a new icon uh, and it tells me to rotate. So we're gonna go ahead and rotate. So there we go. So now I can move around in my scene, as you can see, and I can try painting on this. You switch to uh, to paintbrush, you know, just regular paintbrush. Make sure I have a normal brush blend mode selected. And there we go. So now I can paint on this thing. And uh, if you notice here, like the uh, the size of my cursor is pretty small, but yet it's, painting this really, really big brush stroke. So what you'll want to do for that is go into the uh, your properties and then you have a bunch of different icons here. Click on the last one here and uh, the paint system, you want that to, set, to be set to projection. I think you can also find that in, uh, yeah, in 3D menu, paint system, projection. So it's the same thing. 
And now if I paint, you'll see it actually matches the size of my brush that's displayed. So that's, uh, that's the first thing that you might want to do. And yeah, as I mentioned, you know, the resolution here is pretty bad, even though it's a huge file. So another thing that you want to do, at least something that I prefer to, uh, to change right off the bat is go ahead and click on the camera here. So if we look at the 3D, the 3D tab real quickly, there's not going to be that many things here that, that are important. So environment, not important. Scene, not really important. Um, the current view, so the little camera icon here, that is going to be very important. So you want that to be selected at almost at all times. The light really doesn't matter. You can hide it, you can delete it. Uh, in this case, I am going to get rid of it because it's useless. We don't need a light in our scene. And uh, yeah, the other one that's important, so those two layers here. So current view and spherical panorama. If you click on camera one, it's just going to go back to current view. So, you know, camera one, you can kind of ignore that or click it if you're in a, in a pinch. So if you go, yeah, you have to make sure that you click on current view and then you can go click the little pen icon, make sure it's set to projection. And uh, the next thing that I was about to mention here is uh, if you click again, so the first one, the camera icon, not the paint brush icon, the camera one, uh, you can also change the, the focal length here. So you know, the more, the lower it goes, the more kind of like a, the more like a fisheye, the, the lens start to become. So it distorts your image quite a lot. So if you zoom in, it's like you're very, very close to the, uh, the surface of the sphere. So what I like is something like 15, between 15, between 10 and 20 is pretty good because it gives you like a, a nice large canvas. Uh, you don't notice the low resolution too much. And uh, yeah, you don't have to move around too much to, uh, you know, you don't have to, uh, to rotate around too much to paint. So I'm going to talk now about navigation a little bit because that's going to be pretty important uh, to get used to this. So as I said here, you, you'll want to have the camera layer selected almost at all times. If you don't, and if you try to move things uh, while having anything else selected, instead it's going to move the object. So as I said, you are within a sphere right now, and I can actually show you this by zooming out. So. Let me zoom out here, and there we go. So that's our sphere. So that's uh, that's the sphere that we are that I talked about. So that's what we're painting uh, painting on essentially, and we are painting from within the sphere. So right now, as you can see here in the history tab, I'm setting the 3D mesh position, and you don't want to do that because it messes up the camera quite a bit. So when you are changing, setting the 3D camera position, that's fine. It's just a camera within the sphere kind of moving around. But if you have anything else selected, so if you have you know, this layer selected, it's actually moving the mesh itself. So uh, if we look at, um, let's go ahead and show the grid. So the ground plane. So as you can see here, I'm rotating the sphere in space. So that's not what I want to do. So I'm going to undo all this stuff and go back within the sphere and then make sure that the current view is selected because when you actually, when you have the current view selected and you rotate, as you can see, the camera rotating, the sphere is not rotating. I'm rotating around the mesh and the mesh has kind of a, an axis. So it's easier to to straighten things out if you are not messing with the rotation of the mesh. So I'm going to undo that, go back inside where it was nice and comfortable. All right, and then, uh, yeah, we wanna make sure that whenever we are, we are working, we have the current view here selected. So very, very important. Uh, otherwise you'll see it just like when you try to rotate around and by default, I think it's V, to, uh, to go back to this mode to be able to rotate around within the sphere. In my case, I set it to N uh, because I have V assigned to something else, but I think it's V. So when you press V, you go back to this kind of like a move, uh, rotate mode uh, for the 3D, uh, the 3D sphere. And then if you only, you know, if you do the space, kind of like move the space, it just moves your canvas around. So yeah, to be, to be able to rotate around, it's a little bit annoying. So you have to 
uh, change between you know your brush or eraser and then if you want to move around if you want to move the canvas kind of like slide it to the to the side you have to press V uh, make sure that you you click and drag if you just tap as you can see here on the side it switches to the sphere so that's a little bit tricky so always make sure you go back to the camera layer and then click and tap and move uh, so that it doesn't switch to uh, to selecting the sphere so I've yet to find a way to kind of like lock that layer so you can never touch it. But uh, yeah, so for now, just have to be kind of like careful. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of how you navigate. So very, very simple. You can just you know, go around like this, the entire sphere. And uh, you rotate, you paint a little bit. And here, if we go back to our layers tab, it's very similar. So all of this stuff here, this is just kind of like the texture that's applied onto the sphere. So if you hide it or if you hide anything else here, that's just going to hide the, the texture. So whatever you painted on the sphere is going to hide it. So you don't, you don't want to touch this stuff. Uh, but what you might want to do, since uh, it's a little bit laggy if you paint directly onto the sphere, because it has to project the texture and write onto the texture. So there's a little bit of lag here. Um, if you want to remove that lag, what you can do is create a new layer and then paint like this. So now it's a lot more fluid. Uh, the resolution is higher too, but don't be fooled that that's going to go down as soon as uh, you know it's actually projected onto the sphere. Because right now it's not. Right now you're almost just like painting on a window, and it has nothing to do with your uh, your model. So the reason I say this is because if I go back to the uh, this layer here, you can only rotate the view if you're on this active layer, so the background layer. Uh, if I move around. As you can see here, normally you shouldn't hide it, but uh, yeah, it's as if, you know, I'm looking through a window and this is kind of like dirt in the window. So it hasn't actually painted on the sphere. It's just, uh, and you can see here, set to mesh position because I, I misclicked. So that's a little bit annoying. So you have to pay attention. Um, yeah, so that's, that's one thing. So you can definitely paint in this mode. So create new layers like this and actually works really well. So, you know, you set your, you frame your thing pretty nice and then uh, you go ahead and you paint, you know, you try to fill the canvas. And then after that, all you have to do is just merge it down. So control E in this case, and then it'll merge it to the background layer. It'll just project everything. As you can see here, the resolution went down a little bit, but uh, now you can, uh, you can rotate around things and uh, yeah, it's just gonna work. So here we have different modes uh, of navigation. I forgot to mention those. So the one that you want to, you know, use the most is this one here. Uh, the other one's not really useful. And always make sure you are in the view and not changing the mesh. So this one here is the best one. So click and drag and you kind of like rotate the, uh, the pivot of the camera. So the camera doesn't move, it's just rotating in, you know, and maintaining its, its position. And then after that, if you press and then drag, and then you can also press shift, and then it'll allow you to kind of like, you know, translate in a, on a straight line. And this gets a little bit messed up if, uh, if I mentioned the, uh, if you moved the position or the angle of your mesh. So that's why I try to avoid playing with the mesh. I try to only stick with the camera because, uh, and I'm running out of memory. <laughs> Uh, because yeah, then it's a lot easier to just snap, rotate, and things like that. All right. So I'm gonna get rid of my history. Now there's a couple more things before I move on to something a little bit more, uh, a little bit more advanced, and kind of like the final part of this tutorial. Uh, there's one more thing. If you messed up, so if you you know if you played around in here for example you know if you messed up the uh, the position of your mesh or things like that or like you're trying to rotate and it's all messed up like you know upside down or something like that and you run you want to reset uh what you can do is of course you know you can always go back in, in the history but you can always select the camera and then you have here kind of like your uh it's like a 3d model so if you've played around with a 3d software before this is going to be pretty obvious to you but this is uh this is the position of the camera here so, you know, in this case, I'm right dead center and on the X axis and then on the Y axis. Uh, so I'm zero, zero. So I'm in the center of the world. And then the Z axis here. So I'm going to change this to pixels. So it makes a little bit more sense. So there we go. So on the Z axis, I'm at uh, 
3900, which is, uh, you can see here, the total size of my sphere is, uh, well, almost uh, 7800. So I'm right in the middle. So, you know, you can go a little bit higher, you can go lower than that, but it kind of messes up your, your point of view. So it's always good to be right in the center. Uh, you can always hit reset to that and it's going to bring you down to zero. You know, you can always bring everything back to zero, but in this case, you know, you want to be at the halfway point. So, and then as far as the rotation here, this is the rotation of the camera. So you can also reset those, but uh, I'm going to leave them as they are. All right. And the last thing I want to show you is, uh, so when it comes to painting in, in this, uh, in this window here, it's pretty limited as far as what you can see. You, you can do, you know, regular painting. So you can paint with a regular brush things like that. Uh, if you want to speed it up, as I said, you can create a new layer and paint like this and then merge it down. But there are certain things that you can't really do. So like the, the paint buckets, for example, it's not there. There's no cropping, so you can't crop this window um, at least easily. So there's, there's a lot of stuff in here that you can't actually do that well. So let's say you wanna create like a nice gradient uh, in your painting for the, for the sky or something like that. You can't really do that in this mode here. So what we want to do is go back to the, the flat version and do the modifications there. And those are going to be applied at the same time in this document. So you can think of that as a uh, kind of like a smart object, but it's really not. You're just actually you know, working on the source file for your texture that is applied on the sphere. So how to do that, how to access that file, it's actually fairly simple. All you have to do is go into the 3D tab here, click on the spherical panorama, panorama material, so this is the image that is being projected onto the sphere. So what you can do here is uh, click on the diffuse. So there's no specular, there's no illustration, there's none of that. Uh, you don't need to pay attention to any of that stuff. What you wanna pay attention to is the diffuse image here. So you can click and edit that texture. So right now you'll see we've been working in it. So there's some stuff already. And you can also uh, you know, remember this is the initial image that we started with. That's what is actually being uh, projected onto the sphere. So any change that you make here, it will make the change in uh, on the actual sphere. So you can see here the, the little icon on the back. So let's say I draw something, there you go. It shows on both windows. So yeah, this is kind of like the source file for, for everything. So if you want to make like big modifications in here, so let's say you want to add like a nice gradient, uh, you can go ahead and pop on your layer. And like, uh, yeah, create your gradient. Although there are some tools in here that are not available, so you have to go back to the, the regular UI. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a gradient, something like that. There we go. And now it's been applied inside, uh, onto the sphere as well. So very important. Uh, right now, you know, I exited the 3D UI, which is bad. So now it's trying to make the gradients. Yeah, okay, it undid that. That's great. So I wanna go back here and make sure I'm in the 3D UI whenever I paint onto the sphere. All right, so now I can rotate in this. So there we go. So now we have a nice gradient applied. So that's kind of like the way to, to, to make big changes to your file uh, as opposed to just painting it. So the way, a good way to work, like a good workflow, something that I really, uh, really think works well, is to create kind of like the, the rough draft into, uh, well, onto your sphere. So maybe like a really, really rough sketch in here to put things in, uh, in, in place. And then, uh, yeah, and then you go ahead and you add kind of like the big colors. If you need to color, like to add a bunch of gradients in here, That's, this is a good place to do that. And uh, because now you'll see, you'll see everything, you'll have full resolution, so full control over your image. And uh, yeah, and then you can always just save that and then go back to the sphere to add kind of like final details or, or things like that. But now that we know that, so this is, a, uh, this is the workflow. So that's how you do it. So you'll often have those two windows open at uh, the same time because you know, if you wanna go back in here, do like some big, uh, big changes to the whole thing and then go back in there and then uh, you know, keep on painting basically. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's how you do that. Now, I created a grid, so a perspective grid, because right now it's a little bit hard to kind of like figure out, you know, how, how things are working in space uh, when there's no guidelines of any kind. So what I created 
is a grid and that grid you can apply directly on here. So we're going to go here and apply that grid onto this, uh, the source file that's going to be projected onto the sphere. You know, just, uh, just as usual, what we want to do is create a new layer here and I'm going to go ahead and load up that file. So MB360 grid and you, this is going to be attached uh, to the tutorial. So you'll be able to download that as well. So I spent some time creating that grid and I think it works pretty well. So there we go. This is it. So it's a essentially kind of like an HDRI uh, texture. You can go ahead and copy that. So it's fairly big. It's going to be a little bit bigger than this. So we'll have to resize it. But you can paste it in here and then I can adjust the size, make it fit. So it has to fit really, really well. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So there we go. And now we have kind of like a, a grid that will allow us to... Uh, yeah, to, to, to draw like buildings and things like that in, in proper perspective. And now, of course, you know, since I have that on top, uh, I might not want to keep it this way. So I'll change it to multiply so that I can still see through and maybe drop down the opacity or not. I'll leave it like that. We'll see. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. There we go. Sometimes the sync between the two is a little bit slow. Uh, so you have to kind of like help it out. Uh, one way I found is to, uh, yeah, just draw a couple like brush strokes on here and then normally it'll like sync the two. There we go. So now we have a nice grid as you can see here and it's set to multiply so it's not bothering us and uh, yeah now we'll be able to actually paint a little bit better in this case so what we can do is go ahead and create a new layer real quick if you want to want to make a building and we have some nice grid to make sure that everything is nice and straight and perspective. There we go. Now we're going to make sure that we merge that down. And now we can uh, yeah, keep rotating and keep on drawing. And this is how you do it. So there is one last thing that I want to touch upon and it's how the layers work on this file here. So it's actually pretty simple. The way it works is whatever you have selected here, this is what is going to be painted on. So in this case, you know, I don't want to be painting on, uh, on my grid, obviously. So uh, I should be, you know, undoing this thing, but whatever, you know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but let's say if I have, uh, if I want to hide my grid, if I want to create a new layer, whatever I do here. So, you know, let's say I have 20 layers in here and they all have, they all do a bunch of different things. Still, the result is all going to go on that one layer that is active on my source file. So on the kind of like the, the texture file that, that uh, if you want to call it that. So, uh, yeah. And then if you want to have different layers in here, you can as well. Uh, you can just create a new one, select a new one. And then whatever you do on here is going to go now onto layer four in this file, in the source texture file. So yeah, in the end, uh, well, don't forget to always hide your grid and then uh, you'll be left with a nice painting, obviously <laughs> something better than this, hopefully, uh, but it will be a little bit stretched. So, you know, the top is going to be stretched, the bottom is going to be stretched and kind of like the edges here is going to be stretched as well a little bit, but that's fine. This is what you'll be importing into Facebook or into Marmoset Viewer or, you know, whatever else viewer you want to use. So there we go. This is how you create panoramic painting in Photoshop. I hope that was helpful and have fun. I'd see ya.